All right, guys, today I am at Rolling Diesel right here in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and it is finally time to upgrade the turbo on our 6.7 Power Stroke. I have a 2013 6.7 Power Stroke, and I tow all over the country, and I've been really easy on it, but I've got 255,000 miles on this truck, and it still has a stock turbo. And if you know anything about Power Strokes, the 11 to 14 turbos, they're this crazy dual inlet, fancy, overcomplicated turbo, and they are notorious for failing prematurely, especially if you push them in the towing and the tuning market. Well, I've been fairly easy on mine, but with 250,000 miles, I figured it was time to go ahead and upgrade it. So I went with the full four performance upfitter kit from full force diesel and it basically swaps in the 2015 2016 turbo into this truck with their fueling and everything and it should make a reliable extra 100 horsepower and 100 foot pounds of torque and that's being easy on it and you could tow with it like that so that makes a huge difference and i can't wait to get started we work on all kinds of diesels here they got a 60 over here in its natural habitat you might be asking yourself, why did I bring my truck to a shop to get this done? Well, for one, trust Josh. He's been doing this for eight years. Got a big shop, runs a lot of trucks in here. Heard nothing but good things. Another thing is, there's no information on the internet and no videos on how to do this to one of these trucks. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Try to make the best video possible so you guys can figure out how to do it on your own and see how in-depth this is and you wanna take it to a shop, this is a good one. All right, so pretty much you just gotta start by taking the air intake, upper and lower intake, everything off the top of the motor so you can get the turbocharger out. There's plenty of videos on the internet on how to get the turbo out. It's everything after that that is the hard part that we're gonna make sure we show you so you know how to do it. This is the kit we got from Full Force Diesel, for performance kit. Basically has everything you could possibly need. New turbo, all exhaust stuff, fittings, gaskets, bolts, manifold, also got these little guys from full force to make sure if we have any fuel pump failures that uh, it's not gonna trash the whole system. So doing a full kit like this on one of these trucks, if you take it to a shop, it's probably gonna take them around six hours. If you do it yourself and you've never done one before, I would, I would expect probably double that. We're gonna take the lower intake off. And then the CGR crossover tube, and then we'll start taking the downpipe, and then that's uh, that one of the up pipes. You got to get out of the way to get to the downpipe. Basically, take everything off so we can All put everything up. back, yeah. but better. And that's the lower. We're gonna change that to a different one. There's not more. VGT picked up, it'll be real easy. You'll break these clips right there and they won't stay in. For the turbo actuator. Cut down in there and get behind me. You can use a rake. Four real, real nice to us. They got the uh, V band clamp back there on the turbo pointing straight up, you know, because they, they do all this, put all this together, and then set the cab on it. So, struggling to get that out. We get them set up with one of them top side creepers, doing the old fashioned lay on a mat on the engine uh, they put the in the exhaust on the inside of the head to help spool the turbo so it'd be less lag you know due to uh all the piping and then also the oil instead of it running down across the hot runner of the head it runs across the intake which is cooler so it's supposed to make the life of the oil better not break down what was the reason they said when we went to the little school they had on them yeah. back when they were coming out at Ford. Right. They were calling it the Scorpion back then, but yeah. then they changed all that. Yeah. And that's what they claim, which makes sense, you know. Yeah. They had to do something because a 7.3 oil hated life in those. Yeah. Like, hated life. Yes, yes. Had to use that race teller in there. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you taking off now? Uh, the bottom part of the downpipe where we can take the downpipe out of the way to get to the bottom up pipe. So he's got to disconnect it where it hooks to the rest of the exhaust and then sneak it down out of the way by the transmission. So here at Josh's place, they're also big into off-road stuff, obviously, since they used to be a rock bouncer. We got a rock bouncer now. 
but the mechanic, Arnold, that's working on my truck for me, this is his ride. Scout with a 4BT. Of course, it has to be a diesel, you know, a diesel shop. Hang out of there? Yep. I'm trying to get it hung on everything. But if you don't take that water pipe out, you'll hate your life, I promise. Yeah. It won't hardly come out of there. Woo! Little guy. All right, so this is the original 11 to 14 turbos that came on these trucks, and they're a dual intake design. So there's actually this intake and this intake, and it's just, it's a weird design. They spooled really easy and, and did well down low, but just didn't have that top end grunt. Um, they're also a roller bearing or ball bearing instead of a journal bearing. So the upgraded one is a uh, journal bearing. So that ought to be a lot more reliable, but I mean, and even roll that thing, it's still, uh, it's still kind of tight. It ain't, it's got a little wiggle in it, but not much. So, I mean, for 250,000 miles, that ain't bad. All right, there's the stock manifold, it's still a little warm. And there is the one that comes in the kit, so that way you can hook it up to the new turbo. Comes with new gaskets, new studs, whole nine. That's the good thing about the Ford performance kit is it's got literally everything you possibly need. What's our next step? Well, with their kit, we're gonna change this. Uh, it'll be the passenger side exhaust manifold. We gotta take it off. We gotta take this EGR crossover tube, and then the heat shield, and then the bolts out. That's what it should look like. We're gonna put the studs in for the manifold. You put the two long. This comes with the updated style, so they don't they have a problem. They get hot and they break. So this is the two updated ones. You put them in the back two holes. And then it comes with two longer spacers. You gotta put it on. So we'll get all these in there and get the manifold bolted down, then we'll get the up pipes put back on, then we'll get the charger set back down in there. Then so we'll be ready to make all the horse pressures. Woo! All right, so here is the factory turbo with a dual inlet. Then this is the more traditional looking turbo, kind of like what was on the six liter and six four, but this is the 15 16 turbo, and it's another BGT turbo but one intake compared to that. A lot simpler design, a lot stronger design. So it should be good for an extra 100 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque when you go ahead and update to the newer fuel pump because the 13 fuel pumps didn't flow as good as the newer 15, 16. So we're going to swap it out at the expense, but we want to make use of all the power that we can on this thing. All right, so one thing the kit doesn't have is um, studs for the manifold for the other side and Arnold said we should probably go ahead and swap those out and um, we didn't have any that were cracked or busted or anything but it's good to go ahead and they have an upgraded one that came for the other side but we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the other side too so that way I don't have any issues because I'm gonna try to get half a million miles out of this truck at least so it ain't going anywhere anytime soon <laughs> I'm just, truck. just doing my best to make more work for Arnold <laughs> job security yeah how much bigger this one is compared to this one. The crazy thing is this one's not really that wore out. It has the smallest little amount of movement. That's really it. Kind of surprising with 250k on. Yeah, that's about it. Well, you got it off, a new gasket's a good idea too. Yeah, so once, usually you wouldn't have to pull the turbo off. You just pull the upper, lower intake, kind of the same stuff we got to before the turbo. Then you're gonna pull your lines off, there are three quarters and then, or 19s, and then the, all the holders for the fuel line, the line that comes over, that's the feed line to the pump. It's got two eights, and then there's a couple fuel lines that you just gotta disconnect. And then I take this front, it'd be number five injector line off, and then these three nuts that go, there, 17s to this line, so you can move it out of the way to get the pump out once you, we get the pump out and there's three 13s back here that hold it in and then you got to take the fan off and i use the air hammer to knock it just loose and I spun it off and then the fan adapter and the belt we well, got to take the belt and then the fan adapter and then we'll take the vacuum pump off and then we'll have to put it in time which i can show you once we get this off and then uh take the nut off and i'll show you how to get it out of there once we get there and that's why i'm not doing this on my own because <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> It'll take me like two days. That's the vacuum pump. Runs off the front of the gear on the injection pump. What's the mirror help do? 
The mirror helps we can see the lines on the, the injection pump has two marks on it and then your cam gear will have one mark on it. And so you want to line up, you know, the one line on the cam gear between the two on the pump. If you come up and there's two and two, then you got to spin around one more time, you know, and make it one and two, or it'll be 180 out. And what that's for is it's, the pump has three pistons, so it's supposed to be firing every time an injector opens, so it's not loading the pump up. That's why you want to keep it in time. Put your dry bar back behind the pump right there, where you put a little pressure on it, and then tap on the, the shaft. It's sticking out, I have to take the nut off, and it'll just, because it's a swedge fit, so if you don't pop, you know, hit it with a hammer like a ball joint or a tie rod in it. It just won't get on there and you'll pry and pry, but you just give her a little tap and it'll, that little jar pops her loose. And then I can look, I can show you the gear where you can see the mark on it. It'll come out. Right. See two marks. So you want to line those two It'll be with a one mark right in between there on the bottom. I believe he's done this a time or two. Oh yeah. He is. Doesn't look too bad for 250,000 miles, but oh, yeah, that right. new one's gonna flow a lot better. Yeah. So the, the 15, 16 pumps flow better. So we'll be able to use that tuning yeah. a little better and make a little more power. So it'll be pretty easy 100 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque, which is definitely gonna make a difference when we're hauling stuff across the country. So here's the whole pump and there's really not any like shavings or anything in there. It looks really good. So. I'm picky about where I get my fuel from. I don't go to a little hole in the wall diesel shop or diesel stops. You know, one that goes through a lot of diesel fuel, I guess. That's what I've always done. And then of course I got the S&B 50 something gallon tank in here, the stock replacement. So that helps a lot too, because I can fill up at the places I want to and then not have to fill up at the janky places in between. So, so yeah, 250,000 miles, not bad for a stock CP4 pump, huh? But hopefully this newer generation one will last that much longer. lines back here making sure I got them tight electric ratchet you know I always snug them down I like to feel it with the ratchet make sure it's good and then I'm gonna go run and get a vacuum pump gasket and we'll put this vacuum pump back on and the fan and all that stuff you missed all ago taking off put it all back together that wasn't too bad when you already got everything apart doing the, the pump in a big deal lines up with them little notches in that front of that gear. Get a little jig on them. Slide her in there. And put blue Loctite on your bolts or they will vibrate out and you'll have an oil leak right down the front of your motor. We fix them every day for you. Pinch your fan wires behind it. You can do that. Putting the driver's side manifold. And then we gotta move the passenger side. Put it on. Comes in the kit. Bam. And we'll put our spacers and our nuts and torque her down. So I think we're gonna have to step our game up at the shop. We gotta cook. It cooks for them every day for lunch. Wow. Think of a spread. Yeah, they do yeah, this for lunch yeah. every day. Every day. I might come work for y'all. I think you should. This All is right. good eating right here. <laughs> yeah, we make some sandwiches. Make sure you put the gasket on. Make sure it has all the holes. There's one gasket that doesn't have this hole right here, and it won't let the turbo get oil, and it'll destroy it before it gets out of the parking lot. Because you want to make sure all that lines up. It comes with a little filter and it goes in this hole right here. It's over there. I'm the truth. Put the big turbo on.
It's got them two dowels right there in the front. Just gotta be careful not to mess the gasket up, you know, when you go in. Just ease it down on that dial, and that's. And make sure this, your up pipe lines over here to snap in, but I always look with a mirror too. Because if you don't, they'll make funny sounds when you get done. Yep, looks good. And then also, when you put clamp on there and I can't see it's back in here but you need to make sure that it's orientated kind of trying to think of how to say it almost I would say kind of straight up but I always put the little down pipe piece in there and make sure it don't touch it before I tighten it because I've tightened it too many times and it'll touch it and then you can't it will be touching, you know what I mean? It'll end up poking a hole in the pipe or something. So just kind of get it snug in its spot and then get that other piece. You'll hand me that. That, uh, the little piece, not really good. Because when you put it in there, it goes on there like this and that clamp actually will come through right here. If you got it down too much, it hits here. If you have it this way too much, it's hitting the charger. So you gotta make sure it's in a happy spot. Hopefully you can see from this that you've got to orientate that clamp where it's pointing out, not up, for it to clear everything. It's a little baby snake. <laughs> this is the dat all on pipe, and it's different. You got to put it in in two pieces. Unlike that one, it goes in one piece. You got to put that part in, the bolt in, and then because this actually covers the 10 millimeter that's oh. underneath there. And then we're gonna have to add a stud to fasten in here. The other one never had nothing to fasten it there to the actual side of the head right there. Get it up in there. Junk, I'm putting my last up pipe on and then we'll put the EBP sensor on and then we'll plug the BGT in. Put the coolant, you got to take the old coolant line off, put the new coolant line on and then we'll tighten the turbo down and we'll start putting the intakes back on. The good thing about this kit is it's got all the EGR stuff, everything emissions, compliant to go back on there. So it can be just like factory because it is 15, 16, all factory stuff. Put in the water, I guess it goes to the heater core, pipe in and make sure you lube that over and going to be real easy when you press it in because it will cut fall out of there and then you'll have a bad coolant leak down in your valley. Put it back in, put its two fasteners on. And then we're gonna start with our SNS, what we can do under here before we put the intake back on. All right, so the SNS disaster kit, if you aren't familiar with, basically if the CP4 pump fails, it doesn't send shrapnel throughout the entire fuel system. It's got a filter that should stop all of it. So not super expensive but worth doing if you're working on your truck at all. That way you don't have to worry as much. You just replace, you know, the filter and the, uh, the pump, you'll be in good shape. But we're putting a new one on, new pump on, so it should last forever, hopefully. So yeah, yeah. If you weren't doing all this, you would pull your upper intake, lower intake, and then you pull your FCA out for your fuel volume control valve. That's what Ford calls it. And then you just put this little adapter plate in between there. Make sure you put your O-rings on and grease them. And you just squeeze it back down in here where it went. So the six sevens have this crank case vent on them and it has a filter in it. And the filter is like 80 bucks. It can still get clogged up. And if it does get clogged up, then it can cause you to have oil leaks other places. So we decided to go ahead and do a reroute on it. We'll run it out down next to the truck and it will keep oil from going places it's not supposed to like you know in the turbo and intercooler and stuff like that so since i have a brand new turbo it seems like a good idea to go ahead and take care of that while we're at it luckily folks here at roland diesel had one in stock so we're gonna go ahead and throw that on too 
and just add to the bill. The credit card's not gonna like this, but it'd be worth it, it'd be like a new truck. It'd be worth it when I drive it with no issues for another 500,000 miles. So another useless plastic thing to take off of this poor truck. So there's a little plug that goes in this front spot. I don't know if you can see it down in that little plug. Goes in here, just lube her up, squish her down, little screw. And then you screw this into there, and that's what our hose will hook to. And I always put a little Teflon tape around it. And then screw it in. And I always point it up. That way it hopefully catch all, most of the oil running Makes back. Sense. Once I put the hose on there, it'll be kind of up and down, so. Try to keep as much out of there as you can. Yeah, and if, if you have issues, pointing up is a good idea. And if you have issues, um, you know, with it getting on the ground or whatever with oil, you probably got too much blow by one. But two, you can put a catch can and catch most of it and just empty that can every time you change your oil. Yeah, I know back in the day on the six liters and stuff, we would put them on the, in the exhaust. Yeah. Put the hose. Clamp. And that's pretty much it for that. We'll have to go underneath and zip tie that hose up. That's it for the CCV. Now we can put the intake, the lower intake back in. And this is part of the CCV. Yeah. Reroute too. You put this over this. Put it up on there. And I always put a zip tie around it where it takes. I don't think it will, but. Like this. These hoses. Just up on there. Bam. Bolts back in. And we'll have to get the throttle body. I think that's what they call that. The throttle blade. That may be what they call it, not a throttle body. Throttle blade off of the other intake put over here. Back in. All that pretty stuff just getting covered up by ugly plastic. Yep, 100%. Sad, ain't it? This line would be here originally like this. And you pull it off, and the line coming from where we put on the FCA, or the volume control valve, you put this T in, it hooks here and here, and then this goes back like factory. And you take off, this is the return, and this goes back to the tank. And this will just kind of twist inside there. If it won't twist, take you a heat gun or a lighter and heat this up, it's plastic, and it'll twist right up for you. And then we're gonna take this bolt off, and I'll get the stuff and build it together, and then we'll show it in here how to mount it, put the rest of the lines up. All right, so, it comes not put together, so you gotta put these little fittings in here with the 15s, and then this little bracket on the back. If it's an Illumina Duty, there's a spacer you gotta put that'll drop it down, and there's a hole under the cowl, but it comes with instructions. But then when you're putting your lines on, this one with the little uh, black collar and the blue collar, it goes to the metal line down here, coming from the engine. It's gonna go, so you're gonna hook this side down under here to this line. And it's gonna come out of the rail from the engine and through this and then back down to the fuel tank. So then you'll hook this one to this side, which it has a metal end on it. And then, cut that out of the way, like this. Like so, and that's pretty much it for the S&S. I mean, we we'll have to turn the key on and prime the fuel system up. You don't want to just start it and suck a bunch of air in your brand new fuel pump. So, all right, now we'll put these other pipes on, the EGR crossover tube, and then the one that feeds the EGR to the intake. And then we should be ready to, well, we gotta tighten it down by, and then we'll be ready to start it. So like basically the SNS just makes it if you do have a fuel pump failure that it's just going to go through that and bypass the system and filter all of that out so you don't have to strap on the whole fuel system. So then you're just out of pump and then clearing out all that and not the entire fuel system, which is very expensive. It's exciting. We're getting really close to firing this thing up with the new turbo. 
Right here, they're made of something that's not steel, not aluminum, and they break when you take the EGR crossover that goes from the EGR manifold or exhaust manifold to the EGR cooler. So what I recommend is putting you some regular bolts back in. That way, if you ever have to do it again, you won't be having to pull the manifold back off. And that's a brand new part there. Don't want to be tearing that up. Almost wouldn't even know that it was upgraded. And hit all the pretty stuff. Sad. Moment of truth. Switch fires up. I'm a little. I'm a little sad. I'll no longer make the choo choo sounds. All right. Let's go test drive and see what you do. All right, so it's been a few weeks. I finally got my tune dialed in next to my little Easy Link here. I went ahead and just did the uh, the single tune. I've got a ship on, uh, shift on the fly set up. I just haven't done all the tunes and everything for it or hooked it up yet. So I just did the single 100 horsepower tune. And this 100 horsepower tune is the same thing I have on my RV with the same turbo and everything set up um, with the six, seven power strokes. So I really like that tune and we'll see how it feels in this truck because it doesn't, it's not super heavy for one like the RV and it's got a lot higher gear. So uh, this thing should haul the mail. So a cool thing about the little auto agent app that you get with Easy Link is you can have all kinds of gauges and information, and graphs, and all that good stuff. Makes it really easy because I don't have any gauges, as you can see. Not to admit, from the factory, I mean, these trucks are no slouch. Like they're 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 not bad with the original 11 to 14 turbo, but it is supposed to make a huge difference in these going to the 15, 16 turbo, especially with a little bit of tuning on top and uh, having that better uh, fuel pump as well. So it's supposed to help so we'll uh, see what it feels like here all right trucks nice and up to temperature you want to make sure you don't just go whoop on it when it's cold uh, so it's nice up to temperature so we'll stop up here and whoop on and see what's got all right here we go gets up and goes I mean zero to 80 is is pretty fast and the top end grunt with this uh, bigger turbo makes a big difference it's it's not maybe not as quick off the line but I mean how often does that really matter you know when you're t towing things and actually using the truck for what it's made for that top end grunts what you want and this thing this thing gets down now we'll uh, I'll show you a shot of the uh, we got a camera on the exhaust to see. It doesn't really smoke much. I mean, I expected a little more smoke out of this tune, but this uh, 100 horsepower tune is pretty clean. It's pretty much like a new truck now. That's that's insane. So, and I know people like just put a tune on your truck with a you know regular 11 to 14 turbo, but it's just not. It is not the same at all. That this thing's so much faster now. The spooling is just completely different, and it should be more reliable. So, there's a lot of work. Fairly expensive, but I feel like I got a new truck now. And upgrading your you know. 11 to 14 6 7 power stroke instead of wanting to get one of the newer trucks 15 16 or one of the new ones with a 10 speed this is a lot more budget friendly than doing something like that now it's not gonna get the fuel economy that a 10 speed is but at least the power is up there pretty much pretty close to the same so now when me and ricky b are towing stuff across the country and he's got an aluma duty with a 10 speed at least now i can keep up
So I've got a slightly better fuel economy uh, average now. I'm up to about 15, which is which is good. When I'm doing about, you know, I'm doing 80 miles an hour on the interstate, it's around 15. I think I was getting like 13, 14 before, so it's slightly better. I mean, it's to see what it does when it tows. When I tow heavy, it's usually around nine or 10. Uh, so I'm anxious to see what that looks like, but we won't know until I hook something to the trailer, see what it's got. The biggest reason to go for this kit is because it made my truck fun to drive again. Well, there you go, folks. I hope if you are in the market for an upgrade like this on your 6.7 Power Stroke, that this video helped. I did the best that I could to try and show everything while Arnold was putting it together and not get in his way at the same time, tight engine bay. So hopefully you get the gist of it. You know the tips and tricks to do this yourself. If you're not comfortable doing this yourself, find a good diesel shop. Uh, big thanks to the guys at Rolling Diesel. They did an excellent job. Anything I need diesel wise from here on out, that's where I'm going. Um, also big thanks to the guys at Full Force Diesel. They hooked me up with the Ford uh, Performance Kit to upgrade this truck and it's like a new truck now. Uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend. If you want something reliable, you want to upgrade your 11 to 14 turbo and you want something that makes the parts easily available, you can get them at any Ford dealership anywhere. This is a setup to go with and I won't hesitate to take this truck and drive it across the country and back towing stuff and can't wait to tow stuff with it. So. Um, still probably it's probably my second favorite thing that i've done to the truck the 55 gallon plus you know fuel tank that i put in it it's probably my favorite but this is my second favorite so i'll leave a link to the uh 55 gallon video but that's it appreciate it guys